that little intro from David Byrne and Talking Heads, Burning Down the House, one of my favorite tunes. In this video on people with ham radio licenses that think they know something about grounding and bonding and ground rods. How dangerous their advice is, how they're violating law, and how they have no business telling you about grounding towers. I'm going to tell you the short version, and I'm going to show you the code. This is Santa Biblia. This is a holy bible of the electrical world, National Electric Code. It is a technical and a legal document incorporated as administrative code or law, more or less, in the U.S. Your country might be different. The short version is National Electric Code forbids, not, not suggests, but forbids ham radio operators who are not electricians, not electrical engineers, and don't follow a permit process. Ham radio operators have invented a false meme that somehow, just because they're hams and they can pound a ground rod in, that they're qualified to do grounding. They are not. Article 90. Intention. This code is not intended as a design specification or an instruction manual for untrained persons. Scope. Covered. Installation of electrical conductors, equipment, etc. Public and private premises, including buildings, structures, mobile homes, etc., etc. Your house. Enforcement code intended to be suitable for mandatory mandatory application by governmental bodies that exercise legal jurisdiction over electrical installations. That's your ground rod that you put by your tower in violation of several provisions of code without a permit. You did something unlawful. Schematic of a typical installation. Somebody bragging about their big Yagi on top of their tower. They've sunk eight foot legs in concrete. They have foolishly and against code put a ground rod a couple feet away and bonded it. Or they've grounded the feed line and they run that in and connect it to the SO239 on transmitter. The only thing that's in compliance with code here is that the tower is required to be grounded, and it is. There is not one shred in this code that requires grounding that ham equipment. And hands blow smoke up people's behinds about how I grounded my equipment for safety. No, they did something dangerous. Because if this system is energized by a high power lightning transient, the fools have then energized their transmitter. And Lord help you if you're touching it when that goes off. First violation, that ground rod generally not much more than a couple feet away from the tower. Firstly, that has to be done by someone who's skilled. Hams are not skilled and trained in doing electrical work. They must get it done, or at a minimum, get it inspected afterwards. They don't do it, in most cases. Code requires a minimum spacing for ground rods, and a common figure, I believe, is 8 feet. The purpose of that is a high-powered transient coming down and being able to spread out, to dissipate through the ground, and putting one ground rod beside the other is a pointless waste of time and against code. Because the purpose is to have electrodes, ground electrodes, let's say eight feet apart, so they cover more earth for that transient to be absorbed by. So that is not only a code violation, but absolutely useless because these people have no clue what's in the code, don't have it, never read it, too cheap and lazy to go spend 40 bucks, like I did for the book, and to read it. But the code says, A, that tower must be grounded. It also indicates, it doesn't directly state, but it implies that it is a grounding electrode encased in concrete. Don't fall for the myth that concrete's an insulator. I got lit up bad several times standing on concrete by electrical shock. Concrete's full of water. It's grounded. Big ground. And those legs in that concrete our ground electron, what in the 4-3 hockey sticks is the point of putting that pitiful little 5-8 ground rod beside it? Absolutely clueless. Put a ground rod here, or put a ground rod there, run in the ham shack, and violate an AC 250-24-A Five, load side grounded connections. A grounded conductor, grounded conductor, shall not. That's not a question, not an option. It's an order. 
shall not be connected to normally non-current carrying metal parts of the equipment or reconnected to the to ground on the load side of the service disconnecting means. It is a code violation to ground that coax connected to that transmitter or transceiver where the SO239 is bonded to the chassis because the chassis is not a normally current carrying conductor if they're for RF shielding. That is a code violation right there. Further, it's a violation or on the edge of by grounding that equipment at the load. Only a ground is permitted where it can be bonded to the service entrance ground rod, not 75 feet away in the house. That risks defeating the function of GFIs. Or if there's a ground fault between the load and the panel, if the current can escape out through your grounded equipment grounded together in violation of code and down the coax and out in the yard and set you up for getting a serious shock or being killed. There is a simple way around that, running equipment off batteries, but it can't have the charger running off the AC mains connected at the same time that coax is grounded. It's sheer ignorance of electrical physics to ground that coax if it's running along the ground anyway because it's already grounded by coupling. The code doesn't necessarily say DC grounding. I'll guarantee you a coax laying on the ground is coupled to the earth, capacitively, by field. All mine run at least 50 feet or more in intimate contact with the ground. I run over it with a tractor and push it down in. You want to be real foolish and guarantee that tower gets hit by lightning? It's going to be bad enough anyway. Ground that line. That lightning discharge is just looking for a path to ground. And worse, according to Townsend, 1929, in his Branch Streamer Theory, an electrical discharge book, says that while the charges are coming down from above, they're also going from the ground up and flying to the top of the tower. And just be real foolish and put sharp pointy objects up there, which increases the field intensity. Th th this entire thing is sheer stupidity. Hams do it with no clue what they're doing. They're doing it in a violation of code, which is effectively a violation of law. Then the fools are going around teaching others like they're world experts. They have no clue what they're talking about. It's nothing but old wives' tales and people doing things like this for pride. This is not part of amateur radio. Grounding and bonding, electrical safety like this, is under the National Fire Protection Act, NFPA 70. It is electrical engineering. It is not hobby radio. So if you got your feed line grounded and your tower grounded, go cut those grounds. You got no business having it there. You're putting yourself at risk. And again, it's bad enough that the coax brings this in the ham shack from this antenna out here in the yard. That's bad enough by itself. But to ground it and invite that is just absolute foolishness. And to this BS about I'm grounding my equipment to get rid of uh, RF feedback, that's because the antenna's out of tune. Fix the antenna. Go out and put a dummy load on the end of the line. Your RF problems will go away. They're caused by an out of tune antenna system causing reflected power and that standing, standing waves, so-called energy, getting back in the shack and radiating off an out-of-tune feed line. There's my antenna cable inputs. You see no ground wires there. Want to make it worse, have a second-story insulation like I have. Have two parallel runs of feed line. Ground that point, and you've made a transformer. Oh, yeah, there might be a current going from there to ground. 10,000 amp impulse. Make a nice transformer, couple it into that line, send it right in the ham shack. What I did was a science-based approach. I didn't, I didn't violate code and ground the transmission line. I ran the lines in 10 feet of steel, galvanized steel conduit, which acts as a massive choke. And I grounded the end near the house. That conduit is a massive RF choke in the first place. And the near end grounded creates 70 picofarad between the shield and the steel pipe. It is highly unlikely 
anything but a direct hit is going to get anywhere near the house. And I've been told by someone with great expertise on this that if it does happen, it will incinerate the line inside that tube and not go much further. In summary, if you're just a ham, you have no business putting ground rods in. Hire somebody. If you're too cheap and too lazy, get out of ham radio. you got no business bringing a, a conductor that can carry lightning currents in your house. Don't fool with it. You're worried about insurance? The last thing the insurance company wants to see is that you butchered up a ground rod installation in violation of the code because you were too cheap or lazy to hire somebody to install a ground rod. That's a very straight point of talk. This is a life safety topic. I don't want to hear complaining and whining. Again, authority, NFPA, NFPA 70, that is a life safety code, not a ham radio code. So none of this ham's playing electrical expert, because they're not. Okay, BYP out.